This DVD provides information about voting by telephone dictation in the first referendum on the New Zealand flag. Kia ora, I'm Mary. We're at Freiburg Pool, just off the harbour in Wellington. Right. Let me put some water on that bottle before we um, I'll just get you When back. I have to do things differently, like crossing the road, I feel like, ah, oh, this is so frustrating. Yep, you hold the lid, I'll do that. I guess the movement in the water that I can achieve, I can't really achieve on land. I'm not using a cane or a guide. I'm just flying through the water. Today I got up at quarter to six and went to the gym and did half an hour hard spin session and then I came to the pool and swam for two hours. Yeah. All right, so we've got our 200 back, targeting 3.30. Uh, last time we did 3.40, so let's see if we can bring that down. I went to the London 2012 Paralympic Games, which had been a, a decade-long dream of mine. I swam a 2.46.9, which was a, a world record in the final in London. Hearing the national anthem and knowing that in the, in the centre at the other end of the pool, uh, between Germany and... Um, Sweden, there was you know, a New Zealand flag going, being raised up. Even if you can't physically see it, it still means something to you. A very cool feeling, something that represents all of us. Hi oh, Mary. Okay, 59, well done. It's about a sort of a 59.5. I will be participating in the flag referendum. I think that everyone who wants to participate should. There are options to make it accessible for everyone. The telephone dictation, there's no one that's higher or lower. Everyone has equal value. I'm George Taggart, and uh, I've been a member of the Foundation of the Blind since 1983. Oh, it's so important, I think. We have to... It was hard won. As I said earlier, it was hard won by our forebears. And in order to preserve that right, we have to take part. My name is Warren. I've been a, a person with vision impairment for about six years now. We, we should look at the bigger picture, and I know that's quite funny for a blind person to say that we should look at the bigger picture, but we also need to, to look outwards and not inwards. Because when we think of the, the bigger picture, we're not thinking of what's going wrong with it in our lives. My name is Jill War. I'm chairman of the Blind Social Club. It's a duty and obligation to do it as a New Zealander. Yes, I think a flag is important. Stand up for what you want. Tēnā koutou My name is Robert Peden. I'm the Chief Electoral Officer at the New Zealand Electoral Commission. The New Zealand Electoral Commission is the independent agency which is responsible for running parliamentary elections and referenda. So the Commission is committed to continuing to work with the blind and vision impaired community to find ways to improve the services that we provide to you. I'm Dr. Therese Arsenault. I'm a political scientist at the University of Canterbury. You may have heard there's a vote coming up about the future of New Zealand's flag. There are actually two referendums to decide which flag we want for New Zealand. The first referendum starts in November, the second in March next year. The vote next March will decide between the current New Zealand flag and an alternative flag design. But first, starting in November, voters will choose what that alternative flag design will be by ranking five flag options in the order they prefer them. To take part in this referendum, you must be enrolled to vote before voting starts. You can enroll, check, or update your details by phoning 0800 36 
7656. Online at www.elections.org.nz or by visiting any post shop. Hello, it's Gail Manning. I'm down at the lovely lagoon at Waikanae. So I saw some beautiful orange colour over here and I thought I'll come and have a nosy. Gorgeous daisies, or whatever they are, daisies, aren't they? This white stick of mine, I've had it for a long, long time and I'm only just using it a lot more now because I've realised it makes life a lot easier for me and for everybody else. Well, um, to me it means being able to do the things that I used to do when I could see and do them now without vision and do them for myself as much as possible. This dictation voting is allowing us to do that as, as visually impaired and blind people. We're able to just do what the sighted community are doing and have a, have a choice, have a vote and um, it's really important, you know, and I think, yeah, I just think New Zealanders are independent people. For this referendum, there won't be any voting places to visit. Voting papers will be mailed to everyone who's enrolled to vote. People who are blind, have low vision, or a disability, which means they are unable to vote without assistance, can choose to vote by telephone dictation. For those of you who weren't able to vote in the last election, maybe you just didn't try the dictation voting, um, it's a really simple way for blind people and visually impaired people to vote. And you just vote over the phone with, a, with somebody on the other end who's going to note down anonymously your, your preferences. Uh, you don't give your name. After the first time, once you're registered, you don't give your name again. You're just, like everybody else, you're just an anonymous voter. And it's a great way for people who can't see to have the option to vote. To do this, you need to register first. From Friday the 20th of November until Thursday the 10th of December, weekdays 9am to 5pm, by phoning 0800 028 028. It's a typical Waikanae day. <laughs> We're down here in this beautiful lagoon area and I'm going to ring up to register to vote to do dictation voting. Looking forward to hearing what I have to do. <laughs> See how well I can manage this process. Good morning, this is the Electoral Commission Dictation Service. My name is Alison. Are you calling to register for the Dictation Service or are you calling back to vote? I'm ringing up to um, register for the voting for the flag. Thank you. Now, in order to use the Dictation Service, you need to confirm that you meet one of the eligibility criteria. Sure. Can you please confirm that you are either blind or partially blind? Or have a physical disability which prevents you from marking the voting paper without assistance? Yes, partially, partially blind, yeah. Thank you. Can you please tell me your surname and first name? Man, M-A-N-N, Gail, G-A-I-L. That's great. And can you please tell me your date of birth and your address? Mm -hmm. 22, 6, yeah, you don't get none. Why can I? And that's great. I can confirm you are eligible to vote in the referendum. Excellent. Now, to ensure your vote is anonymous, you'll have to call us back in a separate phone call. When you call us back, we won't ask for your name, but we'll ask for a registration number, which I'll give to you shortly, and the mm -hmm. answer to an identification question. So we've got three possible identification questions to choose from, and I'll read those options to you now. The name of your first pet, or the name of the street you grew up in, or the name of your primary school you attended. Which question would you like to select? I'll take the name of my first pet. Name of your first pet, great. <laughs> Who would be Rastus? Rastus, his <laughs> name. So now I'm able to provide you with your registration number. If you have means to record it, I can give it to you now over the phone, otherwise we can send it to you by email or a text message. By post or we can call you back. Uh, could you text it to me please, I'd appreciate that. So what cell phone number would you like me to send your registration number to? 021. And your registration is now complete. Please remember that you must vote using the service. And we'll also be sending you formal confirmation by letter that you have registered to use the dictation service. This will be sent to the postal address you confirmed earlier. This is done to protect you and for us to be sure that you are the person who has registered to use the service. Now do note you can vote before you receive this letter. That's great, thank you. 
We really appreciate you calling us and... Please remember when you call back to vote, do not say your name or address. I definitely won't. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Have a good day. Okay. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. She made it very simple and um, I could understand what I have to do and I think it's going to make the process relatively easy. Just got to remember the name of my first pet. That would be <laughs> um, but apart from that, no, I think it'll be a nice um, process to be a part of. I absolutely love it. I took part in dictation voting at the last general election and it was so comforting to be able to do everything myself in the privacy of my own home. Uh, obviously there was someone else involved, but uh, I was anonymous to them. They didn't know my name, they just knew my number, and uh, they were anonymous to me, and I felt that was a real big step forward. In my mail today, I've received this envelope, which is a bit unusual because it's got a black piece up in the corner and a little orange bit, and I'm going to take it through to my CCTV and check out what actually it is. So this has got my name and address on it um, and it's explaining how one completes the form. Everybody in the country is going to be sent these papers because you're on the electoral roll, you get sent these papers to vote with. So these are sent to everybody. So it's not a mix up, it's not a mistake, it's just how it is. But if you're registered for dictation voting, throw them away because otherwise you're going to void your vote. I'm going to rip up the papers and put them in the bin. That way nobody else can use them either. Done. The voting paper asks, if the New Zealand flag changes, which flag would you prefer? It shows the flag options, and you vote by ranking them in the order you prefer. One, two, three, and so on. You don't have to rank every option if you don't want to. You can rank as many or as few as you choose but you shouldn't skip a number or use the same number more than once. Right, there's going to be five flags and they're going to be A, B, C, D and E, but they're also going to have names. You work with whatever works for you best, but each one's going to be described. So while you're watching, listening, write down your, your options so that you, you can rank them one through five and then when you come to vote, you're going to know what you're wanting, wanting to vote for. And at the end of this DVD, you're going to see them again, you're going to hear those descriptions again. And so in your mind, hopefully by then, you're going to have a good picture of what you're looking at and what you want to vote for. I've got my DVD from the Foundation of the Blind and I'm just getting my TV organised, my nice large screen. I'm getting my piece of paper and my felt pen so that I can do my voting. Got my A, B, C, D, E on one side, and then just rate them one through five. Okay, one DVD. Now we're going to push play and see what we see. Now let's go through the flag options. As each design is described, a picture of it will appear on the screen. Option A, silver fern, black, white and blue. The dominant feature of this flag is a white fern frond that sweeps up diagonally from the bottom left corner to the right of the top centre. The left side of the fern is on a black background. To the right of the fern, there are four stars in the formation of the Southern Cross constellation on a blue background. Each star is red with a white border and has five points. Option B, Red Peak. In the centre of this flag are two thick white diagonal lines. They start in the left and right bottom corners and meet in the centre top, forming an upside down V shape. The spaces around the shape form triangles. The triangle in the centre of the shape is red. The triangle to the left of the upside down V shape is black and the triangle to the right is blue. Option C Koru. The right half of this flag is black. At the halfway point of the flag, the black forms a koru on a white background. The black koru spirals down and to the left from the top of the flag. Option D. Silver fern, black and white. The dominant feature of this flag is a black and white fern front. 
The fern frond sweeps diagonally up from the bottom left corner to the top right corner of the flag. The leaves and the stem on the top side of the fern are black on a white background. The leaves and the stem on the bottom side are white on a black background. Option E. Silver fern. Red, white and blue. The dominant feature of this flag is a white fern front that sweeps up diagonally from the bottom left corner to the right of the top centre. The left side of the fern is on a red background. To the right of the fern, there are four stars in the formation of the Southern Cross constellation on a blue background. Each star is red with a white border and has five points. In the centre of this flag are two thick white diagonal lines. I found that really good. I needed to see it a couple of times though just to just make sure I had it in my head what I was looking at and how I wanted to vote. I've got my preferences all nicely written out and then so that when I make my call. Number one is my, my favourite, down to number five which is my least favourite, but you don't have to pick all of them. You don't have to have five. You can have one, you can pick two, three, whatever you want. You can phone to vote from Friday the 20th of November, weekdays 9am to 5pm. Voting finishes on Friday the 11th of December at 7pm. To vote, phone 0800 028 028. So now the plan is I'm going to ring up and do my dictation voting. I have my registration number, which has been sent to me on text, which was fantastic and I know my answer to my other question and I've, I've watched the DVD, I've seen the flags, I've seen what I want to vote for and I've got them listed in order of preference and now I'm going to vote. Good afternoon, this is the Electoral Commission Dictation Service. My name is Rory. Are you calling to register for the Dictation Service or are you calling back to vote? I'm calling back to vote. I will not know your name or address during the call as I will not be accessing the personal information you gave us. Another electoral official will be listening to this call and will confirm that I've marked the voting paper according to your instructions. Can you please tell me your six digit registration number? Sure. Uh, 540001. Thank you. Can you please answer the following question? What is the name, name of your first pet? Restus. Thank you very much. I can confirm you are registered to vote. Excellent. I will now read the flag designs in the order they appear on the voting paper from left to right. Option A, silver fern, black, white and blue. The dominant feature of this flag is the white upside down front, V shape with black diagonally to the right of the blue. blue. That was option B. The is red with a white border and has five points. Which flag would you like me to mark as your first preference? Which flag would you like me to mark as your second preference? Would you like me to mark the remaining flag as your fifth preference? Yes. I will now ask another elected official to read back your preferences as I have marked them on the voting paper. Hello, my name is Bronwyn. On your voting paper, your first preference is your second preference. And the fifth selection was, is that correct? Fantastic, thank you. I'm now going to place your ballot paper into a ballot box. If you wish to vote using the dictation service for the second referendum, please call us in March to register. Thank you and have a great day. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, that was great, that was easy. I like the way they read back through the options again, just so that you just got it in your head, I got it in my head anyway, that it, what I was voting for was what I wanted, so that you know there's absolutely no mistakes, and um, yep, I've done my, done my voting now and I feel good. If one flag option receives 50% or more of all the first preference votes, that is, votes marked one, it will be selected on the first count. If no flag option gets 50% or more of first preference votes, the flag with the fewest votes marked one will be dropped, and its votes will go to the flag each voter ranked next. This continues until one flag gets 50% or more of the valid vote. The result is binding. So whichever flag we choose will go to the second referendum in March, when voters choose between it and the current New Zealand flag. This has been a great process for me and I'm, I'm so glad to have been able to be participating in this dictation voting and I hope as many of you as you can will join me, take the opportunity to have a vote 
and let the blind people be seen out in the community doing their thing and having a say like everybody else. It doesn't stop us having a vision uh, just because we have, a, uh, we have no vision. <laughs> Thank you for watching this film. I hope you found it useful. And if you choose to use the telephone dictation voting service, I hope that it meets your needs. OK, so this is goodbye from me. This is the end of the DVD. Unless you want to watch the flag options again, they're going to come on the screen when I finish speaking. But if you've already made your choices, switch your DVD off now. Go have a cup of coffee and I'll see you in March. Option A. Silver fern. Black, white and blue. The dominant feature of this flag is a white fern frond that sweeps up diagonally from the bottom left corner to the right of the top centre. The left side of the fern is on a black background. To the right of the fern, there are four stars in the formation of the Southern Cross constellation on a blue background. Each star is red with a white border and has five points. Option B. Red Peak. In the centre of this flag are two thick white diagonal lines. They start in the left and right bottom corners and meet in the centre top, forming an upside down V shape. The spaces around the shape form triangles. The triangle in the centre of the shape is red. The triangle to the left of the upside down V shape is black and the triangle to the right is blue. Option C. Koru. The right half of this flag is black. At the halfway point of the flag, the black forms a koru on a white background. The black koru spirals down and to the left from the top of the flag. Option D. Silver fern, black and white. The dominant feature of this flag is a black and white fern frond. The fern frond sweeps diagonally up from the bottom left corner to the top right corner of the flag. The leaves and the stem on the top side of the fern are black on a white background. The leaves and the stem on the bottom side are white on a black background. Option E. Silver fern. Red, white and blue. The dominant feature of this flag is a white fern frond that sweeps up diagonally from the bottom left corner to the right of the top centre. The left side of the fern is on a red background. To the right of the fern, there are four stars in the formation of the Southern Cross constellation on a blue background. Each star is red with a white border and has five points. You can phone to vote from Friday the 20th of November. Weekdays, 9am to 5pm. Voting finishes on Friday the 11th of December at 7pm. To vote, phone 0800 028 028.